If anybody would like to talk, please come in. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, Vena. How are you? Hello. Quite fine. Quite fine. How are you too? Uh, good, good. Very good. Still in Kovalam? Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> very much stuck. <laughs> very and much they say, stuck. yes, yes. They say in India the corona is growing still. Yes, it does. <laughs> and they even um, cancelled the. Uh, uh, the starting of international flights, so you ne we never know if we can go back home ever or not. Well, uh, eventually, I guess it will work again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a little question here. Um, uh, you are known as a devotee of Amas. Yes. A former devotee. <laughs> well, uh, Yes, devotee but, uh, from far, still devotee. <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, the hardcore devotees, they usually have some special attribute, and I show you. Yeah, look. <laughs> so now I wonder if you have such an attribute or not. If you don't, that doesn't count as a real devotee then. Oh, then I'm not a real devotee. <laughs> no. <laughs> Did you ever consider becoming a real devotee? Meaning having an Amap uh, doll? Yes. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, does it mean that there is there exists such a hierarchy in between the devotees? I mean, those who have uh, this kind of attribute and uh, those who are lower, you know, who do not deserve to be um, uh, on a high level, you know. And uh, how can you comment on this? Yeah. Uh, Victor, please turn your microphone off. You're interfering. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, the, it's one of your joking questions, not very yes, serious, yes. I think. <laughs> this is more like joke. Yes. But still. No, there is no such hierarchy. Anyone who wants can buy an Amadol. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, but nevertheless, still there is some kind of, uh, you know, I think even those devotees in being themselves they feel like you know if yeah if i have an amadol and everything so i am kind of superior than the others no well maybe some devotees may feel like this that's their own problem okay. <laughs> <laughs> and how comes there are no more dolls with the other uh you know um like uh, rishis and stuff uh, those who um other devotees, somehow they don't have dolls, just Amma. Well, this somehow started somebody, I think somebody first made a doll and then pre presented that to Amma and others around, they thought this was so fantastic and then they started to do the Amma doll somehow. <laughs> 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 this is a sign of our time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. anyway, we are very happy. We have this kind of doll. And so you are a superior devotee. Very much superior. We feel super superior. <laughs> mm. And you know, uh, they even, uh, what they do after some time, if you have that doll and something goes wrong, you can bring it back to the, to the shop and they do this uh, recharge, you know, they, they, they change the parts and everything. It's very, very lifetime guarantee. Okay, great. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> no problem in your life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was the question. But still, uh, very good to see you and good to be with you. Thank you for being with us. You are welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good time in Kovalam. 
Okay. Thanks. However, Good. however long it takes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where are you? Anybody else would like to come? We started a bit choking. We can continue to choke, <laughs> but if somebody wants to talk a bit more profound, you're welcome. Hello, Werner. Hello. Hello. Lily. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to see you again. <laughs> yeah, we missed you last time. <laughs> yes, I was late for the last satsang. Yeah. <laughs> I, I started uh, um, watching it in recording and uh, it touched me very much. Some questions from Helen, from Vivian, and your answers, and um, I am, I feel it very, uh, with my heart. Very nice. Mm. Have you come, but have you come with a subject now you would like to talk about? Yes, I, um, I want to talk about meditation. Uh, I remember that uh, uh, you recommend uh, how to do this, uh, to find the point in the body uh, where we feel con good connection with ourselves and uh, be here and now uh, to be present. Yes. Uh, um, and uh, my point is uh, my belly now. I feel it and I breath in and breath out and uh, try to be here and try to be aware. Mm -hmm. um, I remember that uh, you told that in this point you feel yourself uh, like you are at home, um, if I understand it good. Yes. Uh, as, uh, <laughs> yes, as to me, I can't say that I feel very good uh, in this point. I, I feel that I should um, work with this with this part of my body because I have a lot of tension there mm. and uh, um, I feel I I wish to to work with it but I don't feel this uh, comfortable feelings um, yeah. I, I feel myself a little maybe like a snake whose tail is uh, squeezed uh, by some stones or something like this, like like my roots are squeezed and um, I feel some emotions like fears, like uh, worries and maybe some depressions, uh, like I, uh, maybe it's not easy for me to express. So like I, I'm in contact with these feelings uh, when I'm in my belly and I, uh, when I breath, breath in and breath out, I feel that something is uh, moving, but uh, something is going on, but uh, it's going on very, very slowly. Um, so <laughs> I just wanted to... Um, to to know if it is okay. <laughs> um, it's okay, yeah. Of course it's okay what you're doing. Everybody carries their burden along and when you really start to look at it, then it appears okay, it's there, it's not happening, that it's going, it's not much happening. But still, you feel something is happening. You cannot really decide how fast this should go. But if you continue looking at it, then gradually it will dissolve. Make a point in relaxing. When you focus on your belly and you have this confrontation with all these feelings, then remind yourself to relax your legs, relax your feet. 
it's very important. The, the, the more you relax the lower part of your body, the more the whole wrist starts to relax. It's, it's amazing how every emotion people without having an idea that they are doing always cramping up the legs. And, and if you see these emotions, if you see this old mechanism and you can consciously relax your legs, then it helps to let the energy dissolve that is stuck in that old stuff. So the, basically you are doing fine, but the, you can make a point to give a bit more attention to that. Relax your legs, relax your feet. <laughs> ah, my feet, but uh, I don't feel some, um, I don't feel any tension in feet. That's um, good, so much more uh, that you can start to relax there. If you go into the place where you feel tension and try to relax that, it's very difficult. So relax everything else and then that part also will start to relax. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Werner. <laughs> you cannot uh, easily uh, go into those places in your body where you f are full of tension and then just decide, okay, relax. It's much easier than, okay, give attention to the whole rest of the body. Uh, and try uh, to consciously do that, especially the legs, the feet, when you feel this tension in the belly, and the more you relax that, the more the tension in the belly also will start to dissolve. Uh, so if I understand right or not, you uh, recommend me, uh, if, I, if I can't feel a lot of tension in my belly, to move to another uh, no, part? No, that's not what I'm saying. No? <laughs> no, no. I, I simply say, easy to go into the place where you feel the tension and then just relax that place. It's much easier to relax the other places, then the place that is full of tension also starts to relax. Okay, okay, Did thank you, you Werner. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Michael helped me to, <laughs> yeah, to yeah. understand you. Yeah, thank you yeah. very much. You're welcome. Hello, Werner. Hello, Vivian. Um, thank you very much for the satsang. And, um, You're welcome. I have a, a question um, because I feel that I have different ways to relate to people. Yes. So, <laughs> but like one example when I when I um, work as a therapist, I'm very much this open space of awareness, and I'm not reacting to anything um, this other person may express. But I do obviously feel like I feel what's going on within their bodies, but I'm, I'm not acting on that. I'm just holding space. And then I have other situations where I'm active in the world and I might have dinner with a friend. And I also, I, I, I'm very sensitive. So I would feel from the other person things, but there I'm not able to really hold it. Maybe because I'm, also interacting and bringing in things from myself a bit but it seems like then at some times that i would if someone has like negative self-esteem that i need to be careful that i'm not reacting to what they send out mm -hmm. so that i'm um yeah but there it, it's it's very difficult for me to not, if someone's restless, then I start to feel within myself that I'm starting to be restless as well. Yes. Whereas in other situations, as therapy, that it doesn't touch me at all. I can just be there and hold the space. So can you um, help me with that? Or like explain, like one, should, one could always be like a, a mirror that my actions would mirror the actions of the other person. 
Mm. As a or, therapist, you are trained and you have trained yourself. You go with that attitude, you sit down with that attitude, whatever is happening, I'm keeping my distance. That's a, and it's going for an hour, so you hold it, you can do it, you have learned to do so, but when you go out with your friends, then basically you relax and you want to have a good time. <laughs> you can, don't go with your professional attitude. Yeah. And then you are open and when you feel that like uh, somebody is depressed and you feel that you are being pulled there, then you can, don't start to <laughs> try to pull them out, but make sure that you are not really slipping into that. Yes. But, uh, you, and there, it's again the same what we have been just talking with Nelly. You center and relax. You breathe, center and relax. Uh, when you feel, uh, of course we can feel, the more we become sensitive, the more we can feel the energies, the emotions with the people we are connecting, especially if they are close, generally then mm -hmm. that comes stronger and you can learn that when, once you are aware what's happening with you as long as you are not aware nothing can be done but when you become aware oh, oh I'm just picking up that vibe and get more and more restless that at that time uh, you just center and relax breathe center relax and if you consciously do that then whoop, this you become more and more transparent. It's still there, you can still feel it, and yet it has no power over you to pull you into negative states. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I experience also sometimes, um, like a, a teacher, a Buddhist teacher would at some place kind of play a role and I knew it's not about him it's a role he had to take like being my father and I had to actually do this I had to act on him like being like this is not okay so because I had to learn to express myself but there he wasn't himself in this open transparent thing so maybe could this an approach also that someone on purpose would take the role to be kind of the mirror or the opposite part a person needs in order to kind of go through a healing? Can be, but can be also that uh, sometimes teachers are being pulled into roles without really <laughs> deciding to do so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you feel, if you feel then in a situation it's getting a bit funny, then you have the right to pull back. But not okay. think, no, no, uh, the teacher is doing something very profound with me, so and then I have to go through with it. If, if you have an ungood feeling in such a situation, you have all the right to take a distance. Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. Are thank you, her. where are you? Now I'm at my mother's place. Still, in, ah, back in snow Switzerland. Close to Zurich, and on Sunday I will move back into my old apartment and get my plants from my sister. So I'm recollecting the things I have everywhere, <laughs> spread out at the moment. And start working. Yes. Yes. No problem, huh? Yes, no I'm strong. ready. Yes, I'm ready <laughs> to express myself now. I guess I just need these regular meetings and connect again, so to center and to know. Yeah, I mean, these thought songs support me very much in, in my being and I think it's, it's very helpful. So thank you so, so much for offering this. You're welcome. And Wish I you hope to luck. see you in, in Tiro in winter, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see who can travel where, huh? <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Adio. 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 Would anybody like to come in? Please come. Hello, Vera. Hello. This is 
This is Ron. Uh, oh, uh, you have written to me. I have talked yes. about your question. I see. Thank you for addressing my question. I had a, I had a follow up. So when, um, when you were speaking or when you answered my question, it was about me. My, my question was about my relationship with Ama and yes. the challenges that that brought up for me. Um, so when you answered my question, you were talking about me asking for Ama for, for different things. Yes. And maybe at one point that, that did happen some, but my question was more, for many years, I was a devotee of Ama. And then, yes. then in 2010, I came to India and went to her ashram. And when I got there, it was over. My connection was over. So I went all the way to India to find out <laughs> that that part of my life was over. Yeah, and yeah. so I traveled around India and went back to, but I had been a devotee for, for like 15 years. And I lived yeah. near I lived near the California ashram, so I went there all the time. Yeah. Um, so so for ten years, I do more or less a Buddhist practice on my own on my own. Yeah. Uh, so what happened is that recently I saw Amma's live program from India. She does a program every now and then on on uh, YouTube. Yeah. So when I saw that, it brought back all that feeling of like, it's like intoxication is how it used to be, right? It was like, hi. Um, and in a way, I wanted to bring Amma back into my life. So here's, yeah. my, here's my question. When I was involved with Amma, all, it wasn't that I was asking for things, a little bit, but it was more that it felt like Amma was always with me. And for yeah. example, for example, if I walked somewhere, instead of taking the bus, and when I walked, I ran into an old friend, like I would think, oh, Amma wanted me to see this old friend, or uh, uh, uh. like Amma like was always pulling the strings. Yeah. And now when that attitude started to come back, it did not feel right. You know, it takes uh. me out of the present and creates distraction and confusion. So mm -hmm. really, last week, or I saw on your video, you spoke with a lady and you said, whatever your relationship is fine, you can leave or you can stay. As, you know, and it's important that we continue our spiritual practice. So that was very helpful for me. But my, my question would be, I like to read on, I like to watch Amma's talks. I like to read her message, but the whole thing of being a devotee where Amma is like in my mind, guiding my life and pulling all the strings, it becomes too much for me. It becomes a big distraction. I wonder if you could speak on that because the devotees, many of the devotees I knew in California, that was how they talked. Oh, Amma made me lose my job so that I would get a better job. You know, it was that kind of approach where she was always there. And for me, it took me out of the present and created this whole idea in my mind that seemed like an obstacle to me. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if you could speak on that. <clears throat> yeah, if, if this attitude, like uh, many devotees have, is rather an obstacle, a disturbance for you, then you can very well connect with Amma without all that. <laughs> <laughs> e easier said than done, but yes. Yeah, uh, because it was your habit that if you connect with Amma, all this is coming. But you can connect with Amma as just a manifestation of that magnificence that you are yourself. And uh, looking at her, Center in yourself, feel yourself and relax in yourself, but being inspired to do so, seeing Amma, hearing Amma. And then when you see, feel yourself... Um, Shri Dev, please turn off... Shri Dev, please turn off your microphone. <laughs>
Okay. So it's out of the habit that how you have been functioning and now you when it's coming back and you don't want it then you can just leave it aside and uh, see it okay it's coming back but i don't want to get into that mood and just relax <laughs> yeah so so it's like viewing ama more as a teacher or more as a model instead of an all-knowing guru who knows everything that's that's going on in my head. I know it sounds a little obsessive, and, and that's a little, it wasn't quite that bad, but in other words, view Ama as a teacher and a model for how to be. Yes, if you feel more comfortable with that attitude, then you can very well connect again and connect with that attitude. Yeah, it's a challenge because like you said, it became a strong habit. Yeah, yeah. And it feels good. It feels for a long time it felt very good. It felt secure and you I felt protected and guided. Yeah. But yeah. my my approach has changed a little bit over the years. Mm -hmm. Now you don't feel now you don't feel that you need this kind of protection right. and guidance feeling. Yes. 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 True. So then connect with her and throw whatever inspiration you can from what she is representing, what she is doing, what, what she is simply manifesting and don't go into the whole other thing. And when you feel that it's pulling you and you don't want it, there you can put the brake. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Werner. I appreciate it. That helps. You can, you can relate with Amma in many different ways. It's not just the general uh, company line how you should do it <laughs> you can you can learn to relate with Oma in your own totally unique way that it fits for you yes because now i actually when i read her teachings it 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 goes deeper i can hear yeah. her teachings more now yeah. that i've had separation yeah Good. Thank you, Vernon. Then, then go on with your Buddhist practice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you still in Mexico? Yes, I I, I live here now. So uh, I've been down here for uh, 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 over a year and a half. So and it must be early, early in the morning for you. It, it's pretty early. It's like five. Yeah. It's yeah. like five. So not too bad. <laughs> Not yeah. it's better than California. In California, it's three, so I'm yeah, better yeah. here. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. I wish you well. Thank you very You're, much. You're anytime welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hariom. 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 Hello, Hi. Leora. Hi, Werner. How are you? Oh, quite fine. <laughs> see you again. So uh, I've been uh, wondering about the projection uh, and also um, fabrication. Like, um, let's say I have I had a, an interaction with someone and uh, it wasn't nice. Mm. Uh, that happens. Yeah, <laughs> there was a bit a taste of a threat there, even like something. So then I thought and I said, disgusting, disgusting, disgusting. He's disgusting, absolutely. And then I said, okay. So maybe okay, he is what he is. And but now also there's projection because you know my heart was beating, my body was reacting to to the interaction. It was a very short interaction intensive and not nice so my body was still with all the impressions from that so that was really what my body was telling it's all mixed of course but still it was very present and then i said to myself okay but still something is projecting he's discussing he's discussing 
And then it started laughing and said, okay, fine. It's true, but also still it wasn't nice. Okay, so now I'm holding to something because it wasn't nice and my body is reacting. And then all the ideas came and then I said, okay, but everything is fabrication also, <laughs> fabricated. <laughs> the mind is shooting, the body is telling, all the, um, yeah, all the knowledge they have, all the teachings they have somehow are in the mind. I'm aware that there is something else, more open awareness and more than, you know, it stops all that and just looks at the birds and I'm looking outside all the trees and the sky and right away the was slowing down on this whole process. And it has been going on with me for, for the whole week because things are, are happening around this issue. Um, so, but this thing about projection is really, I'm very curious about who projects, what projects, how can I um, identify or realize, I'm not sure. What was actually the question? How can you? About projection is, Something similar to what I asked last week, when there is an itch, I know the place that is itching on my skin, and then I can scratch it. Yeah. When there is projection, it's a whole set of, um, of it's happening. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> right, of course. We are always doing it. <laughs> right. It's so not the others. Yeah, we are yeah. doing it. Yeah. Uh, it's the whole thing, which is me, the mind, and everything. Um, right. Yeah. But there is a confrontation like this, which is not nice. Then, of, the, of course, after that, it's the tendency what you described that we go back and sit and he's terrible, she's terrible. <laughs> I'm right, they are wrong. But when you catch yourself, then don't encourage that. They are living in their own world. They are reacting according to their own bringing up, programming, what they have, the conditioning. If you dwell on it that somebody is bad, somebody is terrible, then you keep on like taking that aspect in you that you don't like, then you're connecting with that which you don't like. And actually you're reacting so strongly because there may be a little bit of that in yourself and it's reflecting outside and you can't have it <laughs> that, uh, because you don't want to have it in yourself so the other should even less have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then the little girl jumps, is it now in the middle of what you're saying and says, says yeah, you are right, I know I could feel it, but at the same time I said, no, 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 I'm good. <laughs> And then, then I hold on to this, I'm good and they are bad, you know, very... Like, yeah, yeah. And, then my and as, long as, we are as long as we are doing that, it goes on and on, it's like a circle, you are sending energy to that person, that person sends energy to you and both are chewing on it. You yeah. cannot really then solve that situation on its own level. What is necessary is that you are stepping out that on another level, not on that mental level that is creating all that. It's not that you have to somehow find the proper answer, the proper mental trick that you can say, no, no, it's all right. But rather you just pull your attention away from that level 
come back home to yourself, to that which makes that whole experience possible, as good as you can. Here, now, be conscious, consciously here now and relax in that. And the more you can do that, the more you become aware of all those stuff that goes on in our mind and upset us so easily, become so irrelevant most of the time. What does it matter whether he was nice to me or not? What does it matter whether he likes me or not? What does it matter what they are talking about me or not? <laughs> the more you are rooted in yourself and become aware that it's so full, it's so full of life and beauty here now, then the more irrelevant becomes all that stuff. And then even if there is then a confrontation, we meet somebody, clash, 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 and then after a moment it may turn around like this, but the moment you become aware, don't encourage it, don't start to reason it out and think, <laughs> wait, wait, who is right, who is wrong, blah, blah, but just step out of it, come back home to yourself and look at the situation from this perspective and then suddenly it's not important anymore. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, that was again very profound. Again, I've heard it many times that it always somehow falls different. So, thank you so much. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> Wish you well. <laughs> Is there anybody else who would like to come? Hello, Werner. Hello, Nelly. Oh. You are back. Hello. Yes, I'm back. I have one more question. Yeah. Um, I have some... Um, so when I wake up in the morning, I, I feel uh, a lot of enthusiasm to do any things, to meditate, to run, to do yoga and to do some duties uh, my how, how, how home and so on uh, but often in the evening I I feel uh, something some emptiness inside mm. uh, I don't want to do something uh, which uh, uh, which makes me happy when I do it uh, during the day um, and I feel something is not satisfied inside me. I, uh, I, and I just, I, I don't know how to fulfill it. And I often begin to eat, to eat something, to, uh, to fill myself with some pleasure. So uh, maybe I can't, uh, I think I can't find some, pleasure in myself, some support, some joy, something else, um, and I, I want to get it anyway, maybe, and uh, maybe this is the uh, this is a way how I, how I want to find to fulfill something in, inside of me. Um, so I wanted to ask you because you tell so much about how <laughs> the life is uh, full of joy and a lot <laughs> of these things and I feel them during the day when I uh, connect with nature and uh, something else but I don't know what happens uh, sometimes especially in the evening time uh, I, I don't know I can't manage with it. <clears throat> Be patient with yourself. <laughs> Be gentle with yourself. You can't 
simply because I always talk about where yeah, life is full of joy and <laughs> and creativity overflowing. That doesn't mean once you accept that statement after that immediately your life will be all the time like this. And especially you describe how it's easier in the morning during the day because you are full of energy and then towards the evening getting a little tired when there is less energy it's more difficult to connect with that joyousness with that center so don't try to artificially feel it accept that okay the, it felt better in the morning it felt better during day and now it doesn't feel so well then accept also that mood that's okay, uh, it's not such a beautiful mood, not such a happy, enjoyable mood, but then you accept that mood and relax in that in, without desperately trying to change it. And then if you want to entertain yourself in one way or another a bit, instead of being a serious practitioner also in the evening, then entertain yourself a bit in between. <laughs> Yes, I try to relax, but I often relax with some food. Yes, Well, you don't you don't look that it's that bad <laughs> with food. Uh, okay, <laughs> because sometimes I think if it's so so difficult for me to manage with this uh, better habit, uh, how uh, some people who have. Um, alcohol abuse or drugs abuse, how can they manage with these uh, habits? I, I wonder, I, I see how difficult this dependence from something. Right, if we have dependencies, then there is some work needed to free ourselves from them. And well, you're right, it's not easy for people with strong drug dependencies but it's still possible especially if they learn not to simply desperately try to with willpower do it but more learn to connect and relax the more that is possible the easier it becomes but if it does if it doesn't come so from one day to another don't don't beat yourself up be patient with yourself. Okay. After all, it's not that you unconsciously just totally plunge into things. You are totally aware what's happening. And sometimes you don't like so much what is happening, but then you are not really strengthening the habit. You are not strengthening the old conditioning. If you do something and at the same time you are not too happy about it, that in itself already is not is helping you eventually to take more a distance to certain habits. Okay. Just be, just keep on being aware of it and be happy when it's not overtaking you and when it's coming then okay deal with it as good as you can and be patient with yourself eventually you come out of dependency. Okay, Werner. Thank you. I try to do this. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, thank you. Hello, hello, hello. This is Manuela. Hello, hello, Manuela. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> so you are in Berlin? Yes, in Berlin. Yeah. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> of course, uh, on my terrace jungle, which is a little bit uh, reminds me to India. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but Berlin is also summertime now. It's actually nice. So yeah, nice. I, I have a question. So actually, I only I'm honestly don't know how to. Um, to ask because it's something I asked you already a few times, but I'm still <laughs> struggling with it. Yeah, so yeah. let's say um, 
I used to teach mental training, means how the brain works, how people can change their patterns, how a thought is energy attracting the same energy and how you can change. So actually I really liked it, but at the moment I'm not sure if it makes sense anymore. And I'm still struggling with, how can I say, who or what is changing patterns. Of course, it's on a relative level, I know, but it's also consciousness who is doing this. So somehow I don't get it together. Does it make sense to change some patterns on a ego body mind level? Of course, people struggling with things and as, as long as they not recognize fully the truth, they struggle with things. So, and me too, actually. And on the other hand, I don't get it together. So who is the doer who wants to change something? Or it's also consciousness. So the doer is also consciousness. So my brain or my body mind system who wants to change something which I'm blocked with. <laughs> you are already laughing. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, you know what I mean? I'm still having a conflict to get both together somehow. And of course, I'm asking myself, does it make sense to teach this again? Okay, just to the last question. If you, if you feel like teaching it, if you like to do it, then don't uh, handicap you with this kind of thoughts. Maybe it's not a good thing and who is, who is doing the changing. If, if you have the opportunity and you like to do it and you can earn some money with it, then why not? <laughs> no, but let's go back to the question, uh, why changing, who is changing, what is changing? <laughs> It's not that you have to put in front of yourself that traditional ideal of being a holy person, that, that uh, with all the holy attributes. <laughs> that was not my idea, actually. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. But any, anything similar. It's not that we have to have uh, some kind of an ideal and then we have to change character and change character and change character that we are getting closer to that ideal. <laughs> but there are just conditionings that pull us again and again in way of acting, in ways of reacting emotionally that create invariably suffering. Suffering for ourselves, suffering for others, and that has the tendency to keep the consciousness within a little bubble. And if we don't want to suffer anymore, then it's, we are very well advised to learn not to do that anymore. <laughs> and for that uh, purpose, it makes totally sense then to change some aspects of that personality of which we know they are destructive. They always create trouble. They always create trouble for me and for others and for my whole life. If we don't want this trouble anymore, then we can really put the finger there and make a point. Okay, there it makes sense to work. And then don't too much think about it, but who is, who is what and where and why. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bit the Tiruvannamalai weakness that who, 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 and then after that people think they don't have to do anything <laughs> don't handicap yourself with this kind of intellectual acrobatics just feel that if there are aspects in you of which you see they just keep on hurting, hurting myself, hurting my life, hurting my environment, then I'm doing well to somehow learn to let them go. Not, it's not that you have to change and change and change and change and eventually uh, you are the self. You are that 
beautiful divine being right now. <laughs> Timeless. Before all these stories, during these stories, and after these stories. You don't have to become that. But our attention has been trained growing up in this world to stay locked in certain things. And somehow, if we have strong habits, somehow we have to, sometimes we have to work on those habits to loosen them up that it is at all possible to detach our attention from that level. It's not that we have to polish off every last little damn thing that is <laughs> in our character. But there are just things that are too strong that pull the attention always so strong and the energy so strong that uh, it makes sense to change that it makes sense to work on it, not because we want to become a better person, but just because we don't want to create pain anymore. So, but when I recognize the truth more and more and more for a longer period, then so what the hell is then the problem with having pain on the ego level? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's totally an intellectual argument <laughs> because it's uh, the mind that is thinking this out because the more you are really relaxed in yourself, the more that pain on the ego level doesn't exist. Don't fool yourself when that pain is there, but uh, it has nothing to do with me. It's just the mind. <laughs> if it's there, it's there. Yourself are never, you as yourself, as your being, you are never in pain. And as long as that experience of the mental pain is there, then the attention is locked there. And no philosophical acrobatic is changing that. <laughs> no? But if you, I mean, if you are detached enough of it, that you can see the pain and say, okay, it is not, has nothing to do with me and because of that thought you are capable of letting it go, then it's fine. But not, in, not prevent yourself from changing something because of kind, some kind of philosophical ideas when it's there and when it's creating pain and you feel, uh, I mean, who likes to keep pain on and on and on and on alive? Hmm. No one. Uh, Probably. No one. No. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and, and those people who are in that Advaita trip <laughs> and tell me, but uh, what does it matter? It's, on, it's only on the level of the mind. It has nothing to do with the self. Okay, this is true, but I mean, if that pain still is there, the attention is not rooted in the self. If it's rooted in the self, we don't create those pains. We, we may momentarily, it may come like a flicker. It comes, it goes, it doesn't stick. But those nagging pains that just are there and keep on creating troubles, they simply disappear if you are rooted in the self. And then it's just an intellectual argument. It's not of the self, it's of the mind. As long as the pain is there and, and hurt us and create bottlenecks in our life that, that beauty cannot express itself, then naturally something in us wants to get rid of. Because it's not a natural state to be like this. And everybody consciously or un unconsciously longs to come back into a natural state. In that natural, playful, childlike, beautiful state. <laughs> Without creating pain. Still, momentary uh, life on this level, sometimes it's painful, but these are all momentary pains. They come, they go, and then they are not a problem. They are not pulling your attention away from your being rooted in the self. But when I'm talking about the pains that really create trouble, then it's the, those which we keep, which are sticking there in the mind, and they keep on nagging and nagging and draining our life energy away. 
Okay. <laughs> If much. there is something that needs to be changed, then change without preventing <laughs> you because of some kind of atritic philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I start to stop a bit. Uh, what, what was your expression? Uh, mental artistic or brain okay. artistic? I, I try to stop it a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Diana. <laughs> You're always welcome. <laughs> Is there anybody else who would like to talk? We're going through a time which is quite turbulent. Not simply what is happening outside now, but it's a manifestation of that. What is happening outside now because of this virus, I mean, never has anything else happened like this, that the whole world stopped functioning <laughs> in its usual way. <clears throat> but it's a manifestation of energetic changes that are happening. So it's a turbulent time and it's we are well advised just to be as good as we can in the present, connected and relaxed without too much trying to get somewhere, doing something, be as good as we can, at ease, at peace, as relaxed as we can. Something is shifting. Then let's see where it leads us right now. <laughs> Obviously, it has brought a lot of chaos outside. It may continue, maybe get worse. The old structures that have been in power in place may slowly crumble down and something new may emerge. But as an individual, you need not worry about all that. Just make the best use. It's a very great time. It's a promise that we have that right now something is shifting and it just remains centered in the now, in the timelessness of the now, as good as we can, and relaxing. Relax, relax, relax and be open. Then the more we can do that, the more we benefit from what is going on and the more we radiate something, something very beautiful that helps to turn this into a beautiful, into a positive, into a creative direction. It's an old Chinese curse. May you live in interesting times. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong living in interesting times. There's a great possibility there. Even if sometimes it's not so pleasant what is happening, so what? And we are in the middle of interesting times. So let's make the best use of it.
Would anybody like to come in? I don't want to give lectures. <laughs> I prefer the dialogue. Hello, Werner. Hello. Um, I think you've already answered this question, but I think I need a little bit of clarification. Yes. Um, you say that sometimes when uh, there are great pains. Let, let's say there, um, we were talking about issues with drugs or um, anything that's really keeping you from experiencing joy, mm. etc. Um, that sometimes you really do have to address that. Right? And like you said before, do some work. Um, so I'm contrasting that with, with that just relax, just relax and, and be in the moment. But I'm wondering if sometimes if that, that pain, the turbulence is so great that it disallows the relaxation. So that is work sometimes necessary to get you to the place where you can just relax. Right. right. Yes. <clears throat> Basically, just relax if you can. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you need not go and look for the things that you have to work on. Then those obstacles, they come all by themselves. And if they come up and if they are strong, then we can try to just let them go, but if they are insistent, if it's too strong, then we need to address them. We need to give them some attention. And there are different ways to go about it. If it's a memory that is charged with bad emotions that is still there, nagging, it's in the subconscious, then you may just let it come up and experience in the now and not try to suppress it again, not try to push it away, but invite it that it comes. Whatever issue there is, that it comes, but be as good as you can, as conscious as you can now. And watch what is it doing to your experience right now, having those memories come up, having those emotions come up, having those energies come up, see what is happening right now. Try not to get lost in the story, in the past, in fears of the future, but see what it is doing to you right now. And then in that now, learn to relax as good as you can. And gradually, the charge of that story or of that issue, of that habit, will diminish. Then you work on it for some time like this, and then after a while, it may feel, ah, it's like something dropped off and you feel, ah, oh, it's good, it's, uh, you're relaxed, I feel fine. But then the next day, the same stupid thing may come back again. And you think, hey, I thought I'm done with it. But if it's, if you can, you let it go. If it's 
too insistent, you accept, okay, it's still too strong, it's still too charged, and you accept that you have to spend time with it. Then instead of trying to push it away, okay, come, I'm here, <laughs> go, <laughs> invite it, and be with it, be again with the emotions, be again with the ideas, be again with the energies, but as good as you can, be in the present and see what it is doing right now, how we are physically, energetically reacting right now, and learn to relax in it, as good as we can. And then, gradually, if we deal with stuff like this, we dis the charge is getting less and less, and eventually something that used to be a problem is just a part of a story. Mm. Okay. Thank you. But it's if it's there, then there's no point in denying it. Mm. If it's there, troubling, there's no point in saying no, no, I don't want to have anything to do with it. I'm just wanting to be here and now and relax. Okay, if you can, by all means, be here now and relax. But if something disturbs us too much, then we have to address it until it's, the charge is gone, and then it loses its power. Yes. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Werner. Hello. This is Ron again. Uh, hello, Ron. <laughs> hello. I, uh, I wanted to ask about what you were just talking about, because uh, often I wonder about forgiveness. Forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. And what were you, you were just talking about, in a way, for me, is talking about forgiveness. So if something comes up for me, uh, from way in the past, which it does, and I have anger at maybe family or an old friend or something that happened many years ago. The 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 process of forgiveness. It, are, are you saying that the process of forgiveness is more not doing? In other words, instead of thinking about that incident or thinking negatively about that person. I do my best to relax and bring myself into the present so that I'm not, so that I'm dealing more with the feeling rather than the story of what happened in the past. And would you define that as forgiveness? I mean, it goes, right, they wouldn't define it like this, but it goes hand in hand with forgiveness. And you can focus more on forgiveness or you can not even think about forgiveness and just bring that stuff up in your psyche and deal with it and relax the tensions and the angers and the energies that are still there. And once that is really gone, then there is no more need of forgiving anyone because right. there is no more accusation. So, so the focus would be more on the process of forgiveness would be focusing more on the feeling that comes up and really not worrying about the person or the incident. Obviously yeah. that... Right. <laughs> that uh, you can let the memory come up, you can the situation come up, but then try not to get lost in the situation, but turn the attention 180 degrees and see what is it doing to you now, energetically, physically. The, uh, the feeling, the emotion, right. And, uh, and you can learn to relax instead of being completely absorbed in the story that brought it about deal with it energetically now. See, and start to observe on the easiest level, observe your body. 
what is this doing to my body if I'm having that memory, if I'm having that anger coming up and then relax, start to relax and then you see what it is doing to you energetically and emotionally, intellectually and the more you do that, the more of the old power that is still locked into it is dissipating and once it's gone then you are not more accusing anyone then you don't need to forgive anyone <laughs> right <laughs> um but you can i I'm... mean sorry uh, if you like that forgiveness you can help on the emotional level to in your mind to address that person and forgive and accept okay they act the way they acted because they are also drive, driven by their own conditioning and so what you, it's understandable most of the time why people act the way they act yeah. even if it's not very nice <laughs> <laughs> so you can help with them but ultimately it's more that we learn to let go of the energy that we are still locking unconsciously in that yeah. incident. So, um, yes, and what you described at the end, I've heard of what they call the loving kindness practice, mm -hmm. right? Where you take somebody who you don't like and you, mm -hmm. and you think of them with loving kindness. That might be part of that process. Right, you can do that. I didn't really exactly mean that, but that can help. I mean, all this little trick you pick out, what helps you, <laughs> yeah. uh, and use that. But the essential thing is more that we just let go what is still stuck. Yeah. There. Yeah. And then uh, it's not that we have to somehow create that emotion of love, of loving kindness, because uh, this is still an emotion, but if we stop having the emotion anger, then there is naturally just that sense of being connected, that mm -hmm. other type of love, which is not mm -hmm. an emotion, which need not be created. It's simply there if we don't prevent it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I understand. You are welcome. You are welcome. <laughs> The offer is still there. Anyone who would like to come in? Hello, Werner. Uh, Mr. Lutz from Berlin. <laughs> Another Berliner. <laughs> Yes. Um, whenever I uh, <clears throat> join your satsang, uh, all sorts of feelings are bubbling up and uh, often I cannot really uh, tell what, what I want to ask or um, what question I have, but just uh, this kind of focusing on you and your satsang kind of uh, makes me a little bit upset and uh, also brings my kind of normal being a little bit uh, um, shakes it up a little bit or, or you are for, for me you are a kind of reminder from somewhere else I'm, I'm not living there where you are living at least not consciously so when 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 i kind of see you and uh, uh, even address you like now it it kind of it rattles a little bit my cage so but still <laughs> this is uh, i just wanted to share uh, that um 
the question I have is, yeah, maybe a little bit fabricated or whatever. Um, I have been uh, connected with Amma since a very long time and my relationship with her has um, developed over the years. It, it became uh, with a big, it started with a big wow and I was very fascinated and then later on came even some bigger wows and I was even more fascinated. And then over the years, uh, gradually, there also uh, things happened which I felt, uh, ooh, do I really want to be part of that? Yeah. So, after almost 40 years, somehow she's still there. And uh, when I say she's still there, um, I'm thinking of her at times and sometimes even it feels like um, she's there as some kind of subtle presence. And uh, long, long time ago, she said to me that whatever you do, I will be always with you. That, that she said uh, to me at a moment where I was going but what where I was about to make some uh, mischievous thing, some potentially harmful thing to myself, and she felt that I had decided to kind of continue with this thing, and uh, it, it was not good for me. But still, she kind of uh, did not say don't do that, but she said, uh, whatever you do, I will be always with you. So that's very nice. That's that's kind of very 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 positive. And uh, it's, it's nice to have some kind of protection goddess floating around uh, who <laughs> might uh, interfere with the worst uh, karma, what, what might happen or something like that. Still, I feel that her mentality, her way of doing things, is very much against some deepest convictions I have. Somehow she's coming from a totally different way of spiritual teaching, if, if one can say spiritual teaching at all. I mean, she's not, she's not like a, an intellectual, uh, um, intellectual master like Osho or Krishnamurti who, who wonderfully uh, explain things and, and like this. She's rather doing her thing and uh, make things happen without much uh, talking. But still there's something in me which is revolting and very kind of thinking, actually the way she's doing things is absolutely incompatible with the deepest convictions I have. So, in the past also she has given me sometimes advice or directions or did something towards me which later proved to me it was wrong. It was kind of misleading. It was not helpful. Still, I feel some love for her and I remember those those times also where I was very innocently open towards her. And like many other Amma devotees, not many but at least some, I was kind of uh, fed up with her after some time and I tried with other teachers. But somehow I couldn't find one who brought about these changes or these wow experiences or um, deeper realizations which she gave to me. So, 
I, I sort of uh, reluctantly uh, accepted that um, I am just in this situation and you are for me a big bomb in this situation because uh, you are a Western mind and you are also somebody who reached somewhere under her guidance. So that is a kind of inspiration that at the end it works with her somehow. It's not just getting beatings and uh, um, being told to be in a certain way which you're not. Which I feel she's a, a great, uh, a great uh, promoter of, of this, of making people into something they are not or kind of talking them into something they are not. Yeah. Anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's kind of, uh, there, there's um, um, my present state is still some, somewhat, I'm, I'm blocking actually the, the beauty which could come through me. If, if I would, if I would be more openly, uh, innocently being able to open up to her, I think I would be a different, uh, the different aspects of me would be nourished or and I, I would become a different me and it would be beautiful. But at the same time, um, I can't. But I also cannot let go. I also cannot say, go to hell, go uh, <laughs> stay in your India there and uh, tell though your Indian devotees your stuff. I am from some kind of Western esoteric tradition, or I have some convictions from some uh, uh, other uh, spiritual traditions, and and your your way for me is crazy. You can't. Pardon? You can't. <laughs> Look, clothes. I have been, <laughs> I've been witness, witness to your story since. I think 1981. <laughs> it's 1982. 82, okay. 1982. Uh, <clears throat> and you have been often extremely emotional with Abba, both positive and negative. And you, it's right that you you keep your distance and you don't have to buy into all the details of her story, but just connect with that essence that she is as good as you can. And then sometimes your emotion may a bit change and you feel like going a bit closer again, then you go closer. But if you don't feel, then you just keep your distance and connect with what she is representing for you. Obviously, that goes so deep it's there, it's simply there. Even when you were for years not more connecting, it stayed there. And the moment you stopped blocking it, you became aware. It had never gone. It's not a person, Amma, in India, that little woman from the Fisher village that you are connecting with. It's what she is representing. And if you... <laughs> are not so happy about certain expressions of that woman from that little Fisher village, then keep yourself distance and connect with what she has implanted in you because she is representing such something, I mean, just absolutely staggering. <laughs> I'm also away from the story, doing my thing, but at the same time, I'm totally aware I wouldn't be here and talking like this without what I got from Amma. Without, without her way of guiding me with all the weird things that she's doing, it worked, it worked. And that gives me the confidence that even when sometimes her actions seem to be strange. 
she knows what she's doing. But that doesn't mean you would you should now try all over again to go close, close, close. It's also not possible like at that time <laughs> in that big organization. So just connect joyously with what she has been representing, with that divinity, with the divine mother, with that female aspect of divinity that is nurturing, that is moving, that is manifesting, that is loving. And I uh, don't so much worry about what the manifested Amma is doing or not doing. And when you feel like go and get your hug and get, get close, and when you don't feel like get close, then you stay, stay away and connect with them. <laughs> Anyhow, you wrote me, maybe you need uh, some time a private talk. <laughs> Tell me, maybe leave it like this for today in this satsang and just in case anybody is there who would like to come in, can come in, otherwise we would close the satsang for today. Lutz, I can talk to you if you feel the need I'm, I'm ready, we can make an appointment. Like, maybe you don't feel the need. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, thank you. I, I, um, I'm, it's, it's good that you in, in, invite me and uh, yeah, maybe we, 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 we do it. It's uh, sometimes, some days I feel, oh, I, I want to talk to him. And then some other days I, it feels, uh, I, I better should answer these things to myself or something mm -hmm. like that. So anyway, we will, we will find a way. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Are you? Is there anybody who wants to quickly come in? It seems not to be the case. Then I'm doing like the other times. I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>